What is up guys, Photo Fever here, and in today's color grading episode, I'm going to be showing you how you can fix the white balance on your underwater photos to make them look absolutely stunning. And I'm gonna start right now. Now this particular type of color grading effect works on predominantly underwater photos. If that is an underwater photos of an object, like say someone swimming, or if it's just a generic underwater shot. Now what's really difficult about shooting underwater is the white balance. Certain levels or certain depths underwater, certain types of color disappears. Specifically, let's say under two meters, you can't see the color red, which can completely throw off your white balance. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how you can fix that to make your photos look absolutely stunning. Right guys, so the first thing you want to do is just go ahead and choose your underwater photo. And if you'd like to follow me along with this tutorial, you could go ahead and download the sample image off of unsplash.com and I'll make sure to leave the link in the description. So what we want to do is we want to fix firstly the white balance, but then we want to go ahead and just remove that haze and flare that sometimes un uh, underwater photos can present. It can sometimes you know, reduce a lack of contrast just because you're shooting underwater. So what we want to do is just firstly, you want to go ahead and duplicate that background layer, just in case you make any mistakes, you've always got a photo to revert back to. So what I'm gonna do is gonna go ahead and press Command J on our keyboard. Once we've done that, we want to go ahead and convert it into a smart object so we can activate smart filters. So we're gonna right click on that layer on the right hand side, and then we're gonna go ahead and click on smart object. This will allow us to use smart filters so you can adapt them after the fact. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go up to filter and then we're gonna go ahead to the camera raw filter or shift command A if you're like using shortcuts. So the first particular effect we want to do is we want to have a look at our exposure and this will remove some of that flare that you can see and that haze in the distance. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our basic sliders here and what I'm going to do firstly is I'm going to reduce the amount of brightness in the highlights. And then I'm going to increase the amount of shadows. And after you've done that, then we can mess around with the contrast. And I'm just going to increase the contrast just a small amount, let's say around about 15%. And again, this will change depending on what photo you're working with. Then I'm going to add in a small amount of clarity. And then I'm going to add in a larger amount of dehaze. And as you can see, that dehaze really does remove that distant haziness that can, can sometimes present, especially in underwater photos. But as you can see, this photo is incredibly green and murky and it doesn't look very good. And that's because when we took the photo, it was in auto white balance. And because of that, the camera just had a look at the overall uh, kind of white balance of the photo and then it kind of tried to do its best as it can. And it didn't do a too bad job, but it certainly isn't what we're after. We want to have a lot more blues in this photo. So what we can do is we can go into the HSL adjustment layer and actually create manual white balance changes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off the basics panel and we're gonna go down to our color mixing panel. Now, if you don't understand how colors work, there is a easy solution for you. All you'll need to do is just go ahead and select the eyedropper tool found right on the right hand side. So if you go ahead and look at the slider here, if we go ahead and choose this little little dot here, this is called the targeted adjustment tool or T on your keyboard, go ahead and select that. And wherever you hover over the photo, so for instance, let's say here, it will show you how you can change the photo directly and it makes, the, it makes changing colors super easy. So you can go ahead and slide it over to the right. As you can see, it introduces more blue or it slides over to the left and it introduces more green, which obviously we don't want to do. So let's slide it back over to the right hand side again. And as you can see on the right hand side, if we go ahead and zoom in, you can see how this is changing, not just simply the aquas, but also the blues as well. So you can see it's a really cool way of changing colors in your photos. But I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off because I often find changing manually a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and change those blues so I'm gonna increase the amount of blues there. And then I'm going to do the same with purples, but in reverse. So we're gonna go for something like so. And then with the greens, I'm gonna do that. 
So as you can see, we've made this photo a lot more blue and a lot more punchy. But I find, I think, an overall targeted global adjustment will work just to finish this particular photo off. So I'm gonna turn off the color mixer tool. So we've just changed the hue in this particular case. We haven't changed the saturation and we haven't changed the luminance. I'm gonna go into our color grading panel here. I'm gonna go over to the far right hand side and select this one. This is called our global panel. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add in a small amount of blue here. So I'm gonna go for a medium brightness blue. And I'm gonna go ahead and just increase that saturation, but only by a small amount. So let's say around 10%. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and darken the light, uh, luminance here. But again, not by a small amount. Again, small changes can make a drastic difference to the photo. So what I can do is gonna go ahead and just open it back up into Photoshop. And the way we can do this is by going down to the right hand side here and go ahead and just clicking OK. And as you can see, this photo looks dramatically different. If I go ahead and show you the before, very green, very murky, it's not very clear. And then if I show you the after, we've dramatically changed this photo and it looks a lot more cinematic and I am incredibly happy with the result. And this works on all types of photos, you can see by some of the sample images here. So definitely give it a go if you're struggling on getting the right white balance for your underwater photos, or if you just want to try and remove haze and flare in your underwater photos to make them look absolutely spectacular. Here is the before and here is the after. And there we go, guys.